Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the concept of bias and variance. So if you recall, we have already discussed about variance, right? So variance explains about the spread of data, right? Yes. And bias, it represents the gap in between the predicted values and original values. Got it? Yes. Okay, so that's just some basic definitions you can say, guys. So I'll be explaining you the concept of variance and bias using these four uh, Charts, guys, you can say okay. So, assume that this is the dart board, right? So, we'll be having bullseye in the center. So, our goal is to hit the bullseye, right? So, that is our goal, right? So, if your variance is low, what is the situation, guys? If your variance is low, all your items will be close to each other, right? Yes, similarly, if your bias is low, you are 100% accurate, right? So, based on our value on our definitions, right? Yes, so that is the reason why all your values are already inside the bullseye, okay? Yes, similarly, if your bias is a good like low okay so your values will be will not have that much gap they will be closer but you are having high variance then the distance between these items or the points will be far right so that is the reason why they are in the second layer okay similarly if your bias is a high means you are not predicting exact values in that situation your values will be somewhere else right and if your variance is low you they will be scattered at, at a single point right so i'm just giving you in terms of diagrams guys because i cannot explain these in words right yes similarly if your bias and variance both are high then your values will be too far from the bullseye so basically the ideal thing which we need is low variance and a low bias guys got it yes so that's what i was trying to say okay yes so if you check the next topic that is nothing but bias variance trade-off so this thing says about this only guys okay got it yes so it it is also recommended to have low bias and low variance okay so if we have high bias it will underfit the model okay guys i'll be showing you an images for underfitting and overfitting don't worry so if we have high bias we are going to underfit the model and if we are having high variance we are going to overfit the bias okay so basically you will be having a doubt that what is this overfitting what is this balanced and what is this underfitting right yes so what is a balanced is so, so let us come from overfitting guys so overfitting is a state in which your graph or your line will try to connect each and every point so if you notice here it is trying to connect each and every dot right yes so this concept is called as overfitting guys okay similarly if your graph is in a proper structural way and it is touching some points it is not touching all the points or it is not missing all the points that is a good or robust graph guys when your graph is not touching any point like see here the point started from here to here and the line is going from here so that is not a good thing right yes so that is nothing but the underfitted graph okay i don't know exactly how you can write the definitions for them guys but with the diagrams it is really easy to explain so that is the reason why I draw the diagram and explain in your own words guys okay yes so I hope everyone got a clear idea about these three graphs. So in the next lecture, we will be continuing with the Bayer's classification and inside Bayer's classification, we will be discussing about Bayer's theorem. Guys, mostly I will be connecting you back to a video which we have already done in the data mining, guys. Okay, so as I don't want to repeat the videos again and again. Okay, in the next lecture, we will be discussing about Bayer's optimal classifier. Okay, yes. So let us meet in the next lecture. Thank you. Thanks for watching.